Welcome back to the University Report. It's now time for our interview session. And today with me, I have Todd DeBergen. Thanks for being here, Todd. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's just start off. Uh, you're originally from uh, Iona, Michigan. So uh, why did you choose Platteville? Um, well, during my college search, um, it was kind of difficult because I had to try to find a school that had an agriculture major, um, being, an animal si being an animal science student and all. So um, it was mainly between this and Michigan State. And after coming to my visit to UW Platteville, um, I really saw I really saw a good program they had here and the good school and environment, so kind of won me over. And uh, especially the football aspect, I wanted to come play here. So, and, and speaking of football, you um, you are a senior linebacker. Um, how did you manage your time between being a student and an athlete? Well, uh, it definitely was difficult trying to manage both football and my academics. Um, as we know, I mean, athletics takes a lot of time requirements, mm -hmm. and just having to Make sure you, to show up uh, to show up for everything, and then um, especially every class period. Um, it was just it was difficult, but you, I just had to keep going and keep pushing through, and um, just stay on top of things. If I didn't stay on top of things, and I uh, just got in a bigger and bigger hole. So. Yeah, and speaking of staying on top of things, you uh, finished with a 4.0 GPA, and uh, we're valedictorian um, for this December graduating uh, class. Can you just? Maybe give us some tips on how you achieved that. Um, like I said, it was mainly, um, there's a lot of overwhelming times, and it was just mainly to stay on top of it. Um, don't get too caught up on something. Just keep working. Keep working through, through, all, the, through the, all the time requirements and stuff. But um, mainly just, just stay focused. Um, know where you got to, know what things you got to get done and what things are most important. So. All right. And uh, many... High school athletes, they focus their college decisions on the, the collegiate team that they would be playing for um, rather than the education aspects. Mm -hmm. well, do you have any advice for um, high school athletes that are making their final choices? Um, yeah, definitely. When I was coming out of high school, uh, I knew I wanted to play somewhere. And like a lot of high school athletes, uh, there's a lot of schools out there. But mainly, I'd say look at the academics, the program that they're in, because I mean, you're here four years, and you're here to get your degree. So being in a good program is key. Um, having the right people around you, the right professors, um, the right curriculum. Um, but you, like again, you can't put on all academics though, because football is a, like was a huge part of my career here. Um, everybody I knew was based around the football. So um, get to know the coaches, get to know the program, make sure the the facilities and everything are to your liking, because you are going to spend a lot of your time working with football and stuff. So. Um, just make sure it's a good fit for you. Yeah, and so um, kind of going back to the, the team and everything, um, what was it like being a senior leader for your last year? Um, being a senior is a pretty big role. I mean, uh, there's only 13 seniors this year, and um, when you consider that there's 100 guys on a team, you're kind of the minority, mm. and it's just important to um, not so much talking all the time, but just being a leader on the team by um, – just doing things, um, make sure you're making your presence known, make sure you're on time. And it's just, I mean, even though I didn't play that much this year, uh, I think a lot of the freshmen looked up to me and um, they'll, they'll come to you to questions and stuff, um, where stuff is on campus, where stuff is, um, like how you should be talking to your professors and stuff. So mainly yeah. just communicating with the younger guys uh, was kind of a big part of the role. Definitely. So um, five years seems to be more and more common for college students. How did you push yourself to do it in three and a half? Well, heading into college, um, I didn't really, I never really expected to graduate in three and a half years. I was shooting for four. And just, I brought in some credits from high school, and then I brought in some, some other Spanish credits and stuff for placing higher. So, I mean, but not a lot. It's just, I think I, I took more credits than most people took. I always... I always took either 16 or 17 credits, and just like probably a year ago, uh, talking to my advisor, I actually realized that it was possible for me to graduate. So I made sure to take the correct courses um, when I needed them, and made sure everything was set up, um, and I wasn't taking classes that I didn't need. So yeah, and so uh, you're delivering the valedictorian commencement address. Um, how's the writing of the speech going, or is it finished? Uh, the speech is not finished right now. Um, Kind of I've, procrastinating. Yeah, huh? nah, yeah. <laughs> I've been kind of waiting for football to be done. Um, now I would, especially this last month, it's been pretty crazy between school and football. Um, 
But once the process of actually getting selected as a, the speaker was, was finished, um, I was kind of relieved. And, uh, but my speech, it's, uh, I've been focusing on it a little more this week. Um, I have my theme picked out and everything. Uh, I don't want to give it away because that'll kind of ruin, ruin, right. ruin the excitement. But uh, it's definitely, um, it doesn't have to be super long, so I'm not too nervous about it. Uh, I just want to make a good speech that people remember at graduation. So Good. So uh, lastly, why don't you tell us what your plans are for after you graduate? Well, uh, in the immediate future, I'm going to be heading to California in January. Um, I had an interview this past fall, and I'll be working on a, a 3,000 cow dairy in California um, in one of the largest dairy parts of California. And it's always been kind of my goal to get out there and see see the see the agriculture and the dairy in California, especially coming to Wisconsin and seeing it here. And so that'll be, I'll be there till May. And then after that, I plan on going back to my family's 700 cow dairy to um, begin working there and finding my role um, and trying to work into the partnership, so. Well, awesome, I, uh, I thank you for being thank here. Thank you, appreciate and, it. And uh, stay tuned to the University Report because up next we got sports.